Blur and out of time. They're joking, there's two hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. A new leaf, um, bit of a blow at the, uh, Sonys. Um, not like that. I mean, you know, we were taken aback. <laughs> Speak for <a> yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, we've got guests, Jonathan Ross won and he has guests, so we're gonna have guests in. Uh, one of which is, uh, sort of a tie-in, he's gonna explain himself, it's, uh, Dr. Fox, Dr. Neil Fox. Popped in for a chat. It's a pre-record. We've got that. Although live in the second hour, we're gonna have a chat to the girls from Tattoo, who are uh, uh, upstairs at the moment in Capital, and they're gonna they're gonna pop down and have a little chat with us. So we're really trying to, you know, make this more of an interactive show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we don't know yet whether we're gonna give up uh, or not. It depends how this show goes. Um, yeah, look forward to that. But we've got some great. We went down to the big library, so we don't have to rely on four non blondes. And the, uh, you know, the two jam tracks that are up here. We went down to the big library and, uh, we've got some great tracks, Steve, haven't we? That's we've got some true. classics. Should we play one now? Well, before that, I just remember that some of the criticism we received, uh, I think, was that we're perhaps not taking into consideration the listeners. A lot of shows, a lot of radio shows, they cater very much to the community, to the area which they're broadcasting. Mm, they interact yeah. with the, uh, with the Where's listenership. Where's the fun in that? Oh, I, I mean, agree. I well, for m me, really. Um, I, I, I'd just like to justify why we don't tend to, um, correspond or interact with the listeners. Here's a typical email from Vicky, age 25. She asks, do you ski? Rick, that's her question. <laughs> no, do I you don't. ski? Yes or no? <laughs> no, I don't. No, you don't. Right, I there don't. you are. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> Brilliant. Keep those coming in. <laughs> See, he's, now he's turned them against us, Carl. What do you think, Carl? What do you think of Steve's attitude there? It's alright. <laughs> More insight like that coming later. <laughs> Black Great, Kelly's Heroes, next FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington, okay? Proper, proper radio. As you know, we're a bit gutted that we won nothing at the Sony Awards. We found out that, uh, on the panel was uh, Dr. Fox, probably one of the, the greatest um, DJs in the world. One of the great I, living broadcasters. I, I, I certainly think that he's, he's up there. Yeah. Um, with uh, with Tarrant, John O'Coleman. Um, and so. And we, Chris we Moles. Are, uh, Chris, Chris Moles. We asked him to. He's also on the uh, pop, you know, pop idol panel, so he, he can he make and break people. So yeah. we asked him basically to explain himself. Why did we win nothing? Why were we so bad? This is what he had to say. The award, guys, was called the Entertainment Award. All right now, in itself, I think that should probably tell you something about what should be on the tape. There should be some entertainment, and uh, it just wasn't very entertaining, actually. I don't mean that sounds quite horrible sitting here in front of you now, but it it just wasn't very entertaining. But fundamentally, what what elements did you not find entertaining? Uh, the fact that it didn't seem to entertain me at all uh -huh. was part of it. I mean, it's it's a bit of a, like hell on a piece of string, isn't it? What is entertaining? We have talked about string on the show before, though. Uh, then there were loads of people I'd never heard of in my life, and some of those were perhaps a bit more entertaining than you. The people that got, got silver, I think they were called Joe and Twiggy. They worked for a station in the Midlands, uh, I think Trent FM. They were actually pretty funny. Funnier than ours. Stuff. Yeah, what? Yeah, they were actually. Yeah, they were funny, and they seemed to they seemed to sort of understand their local. They seemed to understand their market a bit more. Yeah. And then I got onto yours. I think, oh, great, Ricky, your face. Yeah, he's really funny in that program, isn't he? I must watch that. I'm going to absolutely die laughing here. And uh, oh god, it was painful. How would you have improved it, just listening? <sighs> bit of humour, be quite right. good, bit of humour, essential, I would think, to an entertainment show. Um, a bit of prep, you know, a bit right. of, so get in there and actually think about what it's going to do, perhaps. Well, right, okay. Um, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Fox, for your honesty. We've got to the bottom. Wh while you're here, can I just show you this? Uh, that lump. Do you still do prescriptions? Dr. Well, Fox there. He was, you know. He was honest, he was blunt. He was blunt, you know, he, you know, that's- I'd like that's a second opinion! I'm only joking, he's not actually <laughs> a doctor. <laughs> um, in fact, he, well, he used to be called Dr. Fox, and now he just calls himself Neil Fox. I think he's been struck off. No, he's Neil Fox, MD. <laughs> right. He's just, I yeah. wondered if there was some malpractice that something They're happened. I mean, we Someone can't- was under, and he sort of, you know, <laughs> went a little bit crazy. <laughs> Let's leave it there! <laughs> yeah. Because Froggy will not take that lightly. Who? Froggy. What do you mean Froggy? He's Dr. Frog now, he's changed it. He's not <laughs> right, Fox. Right, he right. hated Fox. 
But uh, are we going to heed his, his criticism? Because it was about, there was no preparation. Yeah. We weren't funny, fair enough. Yeah. Um, there was just really no content we in the show. We didn't care about We didn't care about the show. The demographic we were meant to be aiming at. Um, uh, um. Just sounds like a lot of work, all that. Uh, well, I, I think what we can do is we, we can take all on board and immediately forget it and <laughs> carry on, because it's easier. What about that? Brilliant. I'll tell you what we could do, though. Play some bloody great tunes. <laughs> well, thanks very much. You've got the style on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. And it. <laughs> Alright? Brilliant. Well, you know, the funny thing was, the, uh, the day of the Sonys, the Rage R figures came out. That's the body that tells exactly how many listeners you've got, etc. And, uh, um, XFM went down a little bit across the board. Except one show, Steve, that went up 34%. Keep talking. Well, what show do you think that was? I'm trying to think, would it be Zoe Ball? No. no. Would it be Christian Connell Breakfast Show? No. no. It was this little mother <laughs> of a show. Really? Up yeah. 34%? Yeah. Everything else went down, we went up 34%. Yeah. So, maybe Dr. Fox should be listening to those figures. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah, will we get a pay rise? Will we get a 34% pay rise, Carl? Ooh, up to 80 quid a month. <laughs> no, uh, just for, for the last, like, two years, there's been nothing there, and you've still been getting the same money, haven't you? That's the way it works. There's been what, though? It's, you're not paid per listener, are you? It's just... You, you know what I mean? <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've, they've each given us five pence. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, I went along to, uh, I came in from the presenters' meetings this, uh, I've never been oh, before. A presenters' meeting, I didn't know they existed. And I just came in to annoy Carl, it was about five to six, um, so I was gonna get him as he knocked off, we are gonna have a Sorry, point. and the presenters' meeting is what, that's where they dish out which amusing news stories they're gonna read out, is it? Yeah, or they, no, no, what order they're gonna play, um, uh, athlete, cold play, <laughs> right. uh, the vines. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I went upstairs, all the people were there, and, um, quite interesting, wasn't it? Carl. Yeah. You know why the figures went down a little bit? Go on. The war. Is that what they said? The war, yeah. Uh, at one, <laughs> one point, I said to Carl, just how many listeners died in this war then? Because <laughs> I thought he was saying that they were, they were at the front. Yeah. Or, or, or XLM listeners went, well, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to Iraq. Well, the reason our listeners Tell went- Tell Zoe to tape it for me! <laughs> The reason our listenership went up is that that just tells you who's listening to us. <laughs> Cowards, <laughs> yeah. yellow bellies, children, <laughs> women. People with fallen arches. Yeah. Terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, it was quite a good meeting. Now I saw some- So what exactly, is there anything I missed out on? Is no, no, they just, you know, it, it went, it went down a little bit, except our show, which went up 34%. Up 34%, yeah. no awards for that. remember that. And then you went all, uh, out, you went out afterwards, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we went to, uh, went to a bar to have a couple of drinks and that. Yeah. And then, uh, a few of them went on to, uh, on to Stringfellas. No, they didn't. No, some of them did. Zoe Who? did. Zoe and, a f you know, a few of the office people and that. Stringfellas? Yeah. To, to what? To watch lap dancing? To beat, what? Yeah, that's, that's what goes on there, isn't it? I know, it's mad, isn't it? Have you- I've never been to string photos, I don't know what happens. No, uh, 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 but, no. Uh, what- why- why would they- I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I was talking to people about it the day after, and they said, oh, you missed out. I said, well, did I? I said, well, how does it work? They said, well, you know, you pay- Never quite understood lap dancing. Never yeah. quite understood it. What is it. It's- it's basically someone dancing naked rubbing their arse in your face. Yeah. That's basically the gist of it, is it? But you- but you can't- the rules is you can't talk. Do they do a, um, a home service? <laughs> I just think it's just, it's nearly, I, I, I've got to be careful what I say here, but it, it's sort of, you know, I'm not I'm dissing string fellows or anything, but is that not sort of like one step down from prostitution? That's such someone... an antiquated, what are no, you, from I mean? the 19th century? No, but I mean, what, what, it's like, it's, well, I, I don't, I don't quite understand it. I, 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 did, have you, have, did... I don't get it, I don't get it. Because the thing is, the, the, I said, how does it work? They said, uh, you pay twenty quid, <laughs> you, get, you get some clean money, sort of, like, little vouchers that you stick in the knickers or whatever. Oh, God! Clean money? Yeah. Disinfected money, okay. Well, just like vouchers. Can you put loose change in there? <laughs> Cos I got a lot of that. <laughs> but, um... I owe you! Yeah. Yeah, yeah go on. Twenty quid it is. Right. And, um, I, I just don't get it, cos, I mean, I'm not, I'm not tight with money or anything, but... No. You pay your twenty quid. They dance in front of you, but you're not allowed to touch, which to me is like, 
going to a restaurant, ordering a nice big warm dinner, and uh, they put it in front of you, and it's like, well, you can't eat it, and you're saying, but well, it's going cold. <laughs> I love the idea of some bloke sitting in Stringfellows, businessman, right, he's paid 20 pounds, there's an arse waving his face and he's going, can I not just, they go, don't, so he goes, it's going cold! Look at it, it's going cold! <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. It's oh. going cold. That is, I, I mean, see, Carl in the week was saying that he doesn't like sayings and phrases and metaphor and analogy and I was going, you know, and, and, and he thinks it's sort of like, you know, one step away from poetry. But he comes out with the most evocative phrases. Mm. That, that, that is a straightforward analogy. Lap dancing is like being given a meal that you can't eat. See, that's, that's, that's great. Mm. That's how you saw it and that, 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 that's so much better than saying it's, it's mad you can't touch or it's a waste or, do you see what I mean? I was, I was trying, we were trying to inflame his, um, enthusiasm in the week and, uh, I said about, um, different phrases and he goes, well, why not just say the actual words? I was going, well, it's more poetic. And I told him the, uh, Isaac Newton one, um, uh, if I have seen further than any other man, it's because I've stood on the shoulder of the giants. And I said, well, that's because, you know, he's saying, um, uh, you know, I'm getting lauded for being this great scientist and all these discoveries and being a genius, but I'm saying, you know, if it wasn't for those scholars before me that had come up with what they come up with, you know, I wouldn't have got this far. Carl went, what did you say? I just said, well, I'd, I'd prefer him to give me a name check. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? If he stood there and he's saying how good everything is, don't just class me, don't, like, don't sort of put me in with a load of other people. Give me a mention. If you were one of the other scholars? Yeah. Yeah, I think there were probably people that died sort of years before him. I think he's saying more that he's thanking the body of work yeah. these scientists and these great men had, had handed down, you yeah. know, through either books, material, teachings. He's not that, giving yeah, a big yeah. shout out to the collective science posse. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, thank you, actually I copied Nigel's. <laughs> yeah. He's not saying that. I, I was, I was like, earwigging. <laughs> I heard what Nigel said about it, about the third law. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I look into sayings and stuff Go a lot on. more and see if they work. Well, one, one that, um, happened a couple of weeks ago, right, you were talking about <laughs> the, uh, you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it. Is yeah. that what you said? Well, I never understood that, cos I thought, well, what's the point of having your cake and not eating it, rather like your lap dancing analogy? But it actually means you can't have eaten your cake and still have it there, yes, obviously. exactly. Well, the, the time that I saw that saying work, right, I was, I was in Asda, with Suzanne. Yeah. And do you know those big binders you get with nice cakes in them? Yeah. For birthdays and that, you can get one with like David Beckham on the front of it. Yeah. You can have one with, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine, if you R want. Ricky Gervais. Yeah. yeah. You can have one of them. And I saw one of those comedy ones where it is like a big pair of breasts. Yeah. And that is when, you know, you can have your cake and eat tit. <laughs> Play records. No, but, you see play what record, I'm saying? Play record, play record, I want to talk to you about it. About puns. Just... Placebo! This picture, with the androgynous vocal talents at the helm there of Brian Maloko <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Informed device. yeah broadcasting excellent did you see i think i'm sure i don't know if carl saw it i know you watched it rick the uh, it was extraordinary it was a sky one tv show the other night it was something like uh um, uh, reality TV. Oh, yeah, I can't what it's called. Yeah, Excellent. and it was about basically what the fortunes I of various. I cannot get enough of it. The fortunes of various reality TV stars uh, since they've come out of the show. Christine Hamilton out, coming out of the jungle, and obviously once again, always a pleasure to find out what Fats Waller is up to. Rick Waller. I mean, oh, he's in the band now. He's got his own band. He was playing in some club in Rochester. There was about. It's sort of gospel, sort audience. of gospel rock, that sort of soul gospel rock thing, like something you see in the in, in the commitments or something. And uh, and the when leather. it cut to the audience, it was like it was in Butlins. It was just a big dance floor, and there was just people like, watching indifferently. And he went, "The people that were here <laughs> loved <Yeah>. it." <laughs> I mean, it's a bit and sad. I have to say, I know. the size of the man, his leather jacket, Carl, was extraordinary. I don't know how many animals had to die to make it. It was like. You know, it was it looked like, if he'd have fallen off, it'd been like the Hindenburg. Yeah. Because, It was like uh, a Zeppelin. Oh, the was, humanity! It was, was people. <laughs> it, I still think, when I see him wearing a coat like that, it looks like he is 
stood on the shoulders of two other people. And it's yeah. just a joke. Just a it's just like a circus act or something. <laughs> yeah. Because his head doesn't make- it doesn't make sense. It looks like it's one of those things that you steam yourself in. <laughs> exactly. you, know, you put your yeah. head out that and it's the, the, yeah. Is that a machine you're in? No, it's a coat. Or one of those old fashioned iron lungs. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, there were some magic moments. But there was a gra- cause once again, I mean, I missed a lot of, um, the, the first series of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, but Brilliant. it showed once again, uh, the moment with Darren Day. Darren Day, a lovely guy, but that moment where he went off and sat on a rock I'm, and came back and he'd written a song. I know. Which he just, and I can't, it was also, it was sorts of things like, I'm in a hotel room in another town. I know, don't, okay, don't. And do it, it was just, it was like something you'd write when you were 14. It was unbelievable. When they showed it again, it's just stunning. I, I love songs you write when you're 14. It's like your first sort of like song where you could, you know, you know three chords. And it's always, <laughs> it's always stuff like, there's a man, he's a lonely man. Take a look at him, he looks a bit like me. <laughs> yeah. It is me. <laughs> it's that sort of thing like, we want to play it with someone and they, you want them to go, my god, you're deep. <laughs> yeah. My god, you're brilliant, aren't you? And that's about you, is it? Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. I, I have to say, this is such a terrible confession. When I was doing a school play once, god. when I was about that age, 15, <sighs> right, there was a girl, uh, who was in the cast with me, yeah. right, and she sort of, you know, she was giving me the eye. I was thinking, yeah. Well, she, I kind of thought she was, right? And there was- <laughs> It was glass. <laughs> but there was another guy, there was another guy there as well, I was sort of competing for affection. Oh, no. And uh, he was quite a witty guy. His name was Scott Hansen, he yeah. had long blonde hair. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, well, the way to impress her, because I was 15 or whatever, I thought I was pretty smart. I sat in one of the adjoining dressing rooms, reading a copy of the, um, philosophical, uh, book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I didn't understand, but we actually sat there reading it in the hope that she would walk in and think, my god, you're he, reading Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. You don't go with the crowd. You don't want to come next door where we're talking about nonsense and people yeah, are flirting. We're talking about the bangles yeah, and yeah. pretty whirlies. You're in here saying, look, just, if you want to come and talk to me, you're welcome, but I'm the, I, I'm I, a you, thinker. I bet you thought you were Kwai Chang Kane, didn't I, you? I thought it yeah. was like she'd think, Jesus Christ, I know, I've never met anyone like him. That is genius. And she, she, I remember the one time she accidentally walked in, she went, oh, oh, sorry, wrong room, and left again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Sorry, at fifteen, so this is about the time you took to wearing a bow tie to I'm impress people. I slightly younger wearing a bow tie. I love yeah. that. No, I, I used to watch a lot of Harold Lloyd films. <laughs> And, uh, he always seemed to do, do very well. I love it, I love the idea of a 15, you going, well, it's time I went to wooing. Right, <laughs> right, on yeah. with the bow tie, where's the zen? Um, <laughs> where's the pipe and my bow tie? <laughs> yeah, it's a time I got me a bow. Yeah, yeah. I love that. But uh, songs are great as well. The other, the other thing you do, sort of when you're about 15, 16, is start writing songs about, like, the world's trying to take a piece of me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you think I'm going down? I'm coming back. I'm against the ropes. Yeah. They try to drag me down. It's like you want to be cool Han Luke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They put me in this emotional prison. The uh, man's on my back. <laughs> who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who, who? They. They try and take a piece of me. Who, who? <laughs> yeah. Who do? Wow. Well, You're you know, 14. Parents and that, don't they? You're really comprehensive. The teachers. Yeah. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. I still remember a poem. I like to say his name. We're, we're about 14, 15. And, uh, this, we had to write a poem. And, uh, obviously everyone's was, um, pretty rubbish. But we, m mercilessly took the piss out of this bloke because I still remember the poem and th th how he did it is he went through a dictionary and found things with that and I s this is this is a poem right okay remember I've remembered this for 25 years right the reason why the reason why the reason why I had to die did I bleed the blood of greed what was my destiny <laughs> <laughs> and when we hear this, we were laughing. I mean, for a, a year, we would go, uh, what was my destiny? <laughs> it, it was just great. Can I hear it again? I enjoyed it. The that. reason why, the reason why, the reason why I had to die, did I bleed the blood of greed, what was my destiny? <laughs> oh, oh, uh, that's almost as catchy as monkey news. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, I've got some monkey news for you. Let's play a record and come back and I've got some great monkey news for you, Carl. That's from the REM album that people tend to forget about now because it was so kind of poppy and such a massive hit out of time, but there are some good tunes on it. And there's one of them, Near Wild Heaven. Excellent, on XFM 104.9. Carl. Go on. Watching a program yesterday, uh, and it was about these Japanese snow monkeys. And it was all about how animals learn things that aren't insti instinctive, particularly sort of primates because they see other people doing it, and they start a culture, and they can pinpoint when these monkeys 
when one monkey first went down and got in the hot water springs and stayed there because it was hot, and the others copied them, and now it's a, it's part of uh, almost a culture, you know, that, that won't be handed on because it's not instinctive, but has to be learnt each time, and uh, you know, and uh, they um, they groom as normal like other monkeys, right? But they're they're really intelligent, and um, obviously the reason they groom other people, other other monkeys, is because they eat the mites, but the, also the monkeys have learnt they like being groomed. Okay, so they showed this one monkey, it went to a deer, okay, and it was grooming this deer to get its mite off it, right? But then it didn't eat it, it held it in its hand, it went over to a monkey, put the mite on itself to show the monkey it had a mite, and got a free grooming. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. That is Because it gave up the food, knowing that if you put one there, this monkey would look for mites on it, yeah. and it would get a free grooming, and it was like having a little massage. What do you think of that? It's not bad. I've got some better stuff coming up later. <laughs> <laughs> on but Monkey News, on the official. Yeah, do you see that? Do you see what? Do you see what? Mine though. Mine's true. I mean, that's an interesting and extraordinary. It actually happens. It's social behaviour amongst primates. Actually, so I saw it. I saw it. It was. You know. Did it rob a bank, Rick, at any time? It didn't rob a bank, and it didn't open a hairdresser's. <laughs> See, that's it's, what you're letting you- that's where you're letting yourself it's down. Not, it's not quite good enough, is it, my monkey news? No, I've got some- See the difference, where I, I, I named the species, explained it slightly, told you an interesting fact, mm. as opposed to, there's this monkey, right? And uh look at him looking at you. Yeah. He's it's not interested with. <laughs> can I tell you now? Can I try and describe for people the face that Carl has? I'll tell you what it's like. It's like if you draw um some eyes, a nose and a mouth on a balloon and then inflate it to about half full. That's what Carl's face looks like. That's what his head looks like. It looks like a face you've drawn on a balloon. Very small, the rest of the head huge. <laughs> it's just that today I'm a, I'm a bit tired, right? Mm. That's one thing. Why are you a bit tired? I just haven't been sleeping, right? Why not? I don't know. I've got a lot going on in the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if this would be like The Simpsons, if we could actually look in there, there would be two monkeys grooming yeah. now. Uh, Plus, you've you've been talking about like stuff that I can't relate to and that. So I'm what, um, writing poetry. Like what? Reading books. Yeah, what? Doing poetry and stuff. I never did any of that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? At, well, at school they didn't they didn't bother. They tried to get us to write more, right? <laughs> Right. By, uh... Giving you a pen? Well, they, they used to give us these school diaries. Yeah. Little, little red book. <laughs> and it was a way that they kept an eye on what you were doing out of school hours. Right. right so some kids would write down, you know... <laughs> Stole a bike. Yeah, Burn a house down. Yeah. But when I was at school, around that sort of twelve age, I, I didn't get up to much. You have no money, there's no you can do. So every night it was the same thing. I'd get home and you, I'd have to, I'd have to go to the shop, right? And get some potatoes and some bread every mm -hmm. night, right? And I kept taking this into school. Sorry, what was it? Dublin in the seventeenth century? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean every day you went to the shops and got potatoes and bread? <laughs> that's that's kind of what I had to get all the time. That's, <laughs> what, that's what why? What did you have? Chip sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Right, and, so uh, you went to the yeah you went there. So I kept with I kept your hoop and that, stick. <laughs> yeah, I kept, yeah. I kept putting that in a diary, you know, every night saying, <laughs> went, to, went to you phase. That was the name of the shop. <laughs> yeah. What is it called? You phase. What is it, you or you? Like H U G H phase. H U G H, yeah. Oh, is that was his name? You phase, right? right. Used yeah. to go there, get the potatoes and bread, bread and that. I love the fact someone who's named a shop after themselves. <laughs> I'm not going to say what we sell. It's named after me or nothing, or I'm not opening. <laughs> Mainly potatoes and bread. Yeah. White sliced loaves, King Edwards. And the teacher used to always say, just write something different in there, make something up. Because yeah. like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through to Friday, every <laughs> night it was just, went to you phase. <laughs> went to, to you phase? So you sort of, you, you think Are you sure, sure it wasn't an advert? Sure it wasn't paying you to say, uh, get my name in the book? <laughs> yeah. The only, t the only time that it changed and she said, oh, that's, that's made it a bit more interesting, was when it was my birthday and I had to buy a cake. Potatoes and a cake. And she said, oh, that's good. Yeah. That was my 13th birthday. My mum said, I got on from school, she said, oh, you're 13 today. Teenager, big, big turnover. Go and get a cake. That's your experience of writing? No, what, well, no, that's of, your yeah, experience that's... of your 13th birthday. Oh, by the way, you're 13 today, go and get a cake. Yeah. Brilliant. Big surprise? Was yeah. it a big surprise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is brilliant. So I love it. That's that... the only sort of writing. 
Well, yeah. and they never asked you to write essays or stories? Did anything? you never write a story or a poem or a- The stories I did earlier on were, you know, you, you made them up, but it was that thing that I'd, I'd always end them with, <laughs> and an alarm went off and it was all a dream. Every single one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't, they didn't, I mean, it was a bit of a- <laughs> I bought some, I bought then. some potatoes and some <laughs> bread, then I woke up and it was all a dream. Low, <laughs> then I went to shops and bought some potatoes and yeah. bread. But did, did you ever do anything that write about an adventure when you were a spaceman or you were in, you know, you were uh, a cowboy or- No? Yeah, all the teachers, like, had scams going on, so like, <laughs> in English, right, <laughs> you'd go in there and the teacher would say, right, what we're doing today is- Got a load of brochures from Thompson, but they say like 1983 on the front. So I've got a load of stickers here that say 1984. Let's see how many you can do in half an hour. You are joking. Did you go and to school with Oliver Twist? <laughs> Sorry, you are joking. I'm not. That's what they did. So the teacher must have been getting like a freebie or something for helping them out. You is this honest? Honestly, yeah, that's what. It was that was. is fantastic. They were all at it. All, all <laughs> they were all other than Mr. Fagan, you had yeah. Uh, and then when they saw Karate Kid, they had the, every kid washing their car, going wax on, wax off, hurry yeah. up. Yeah. I'm teaching, I'm teaching you something. Wax on, wax off, paint the fence. So I'm just saying, you know, that's that's why I'm a bit quiet because you're talking about stuff I can't can't relate to. And why and why didn't you sleep last night? I'm just I, I haven't slept well for, for since I was about twelve. <laughs> Do you sleep well, Steve? <laughs> but oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, you can't let that go! I haven't slept well since I was twelve. What do you know, mean? Do you know, like, a proper... I used to love going to bed as, as like, a kid. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, oh, am I gonna sleep tonight? And, and I sort of wake up about four times. Right. Whereas when you're a kid, I remember really loving, like, going to bed. I'd, I'd, what, there was one time where I actually laughed myself to sleep. <laughs> Because I couldn't believe me luck. <laughs> Is there something wrong with him? What do you mean you, <laughs> do you laugh know, yourself? Have you ever had it when you're, when you're really tired and you get in bed and the pillars feel Yeah, it's all cold. Yeah. And, and it's like, I can't believe this. Yeah. And I, I, it happened twice. Once when I just went to bed and I was really looking forward to it. And also when I, I helped my dad out once, like through the night, he worked at, like, at this paper company, right? And uh, <laughs> I helped him out and I got in at about four in the morning with him. Got in bed. And I just was like, I, had, I, I was laughing my head off. I had to put the pillow over my head because I, I couldn't believe me luck. Like I, I was like, oh, this is great. This I'm going to sleep. I, I just have <laughs> to say, life up north is so extraordinary. No, but you must be the easiest kid in the world to please. No wonder she knew she could just go get a cake. It's sort of like, uh, what what was he expecting? We were say he was expecting an extra hour in bed, <laughs> yeah. but we got him cake as well. <laughs> go I to bed love without that. any supper. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. It, your just, own it, bed. How long was it before you got your own- what did you, just, you used to do before? Just some straw in the corner? No, it's just that- that thing of when you're really tired and- And do you ever do this with Suzanne though? Do you ever laugh yourself to sleep with her? <sighs> no, that's what I mean. She can't sleep because you're chuckling away. I'm just- I don't know what's up with me. I've got a lot going on. <laughs> what, what- what do you mean you've got a lot going I don't know. on? I don't know. I was talking to the security bloke before saying, do you sleep? <laughs> Have you got much going on in your head and stuff and- I don't know. No, he wasn't insulted by that, I'm sure. Going up to someone and going, have you got a lot going on in your head? That uh, is brilliant. It I've worries me. It's interesting that um, your lack of sleep coincides with the diaries and the uh, the writing of the bread and potato story every day. I don't know if once you had that responsibility. Why don't you every night go to Hugh Fay's, get some bread and potatoes, you don't have to eat them, then go to bed and I think you'll be chuckling yourself to sleep <laughs> in no time. <laughs> Um, I'm stunned at Carl's rudeness, okay? That's badly drawn boy, by the way, all possibilities. There's a lovely chap just calls in saying about- sounds, and Carl, because the record's ended, he doesn't say, oh, I've got to go to the record's end, he went, yeah, and he- but- so- He's still there. Well, I haven't uh, cut him off. He's well, just check if he's still there. He doesn't want to be on radio. Oh, he said oh, he didn't want to be I on the radio, still, but I think you should apologise. I'm still here, hello? See? Hello. Right. I'm still. I did ask not to be put live on radio because I get very embarrassed. No, don't but worry. All we wanted to do is, is just wanted to apologise for Carl's curtness and his rudeness. No, all I want to say is the station is good because you you couldn't have a worse slot on a Saturday afternoon, right? Because the youngsters are in the boozers, the older fellas are doing the punting, the racing, the football, and whatever. The thing is, the state you play. If you want, if you want to get number one, this is XFM, not radio station, two. 
if you want to be, if you want to be the top, all you've got to do is start playing Natalia and Brakely and this, that, and have your audience with one puke of hair between four legs, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Now, that's why I didn't want to go live on radio. But you are dead, I do, I do, when, when Christian got a little bit sick about being 13, then he got to go, whatever. Uh, you, you're the soundest station in the area, you cover, I don't like all the stuff you play, the, the station plays, but it, you're actually doing what's there. Thank and you very you what, much. You keep going, you keep going, persevere, and, and you'll make, it's well worth listening to anyway, okay? Thank otherwise you, cheers. I uh, otherwise I wouldn't Can you hear us? <laughs> Thank you, bye. Dead sound, mate, be careful, yeah? I mean, I can see why you cut him off. <laughs> no, stop it. Man right. alive. We've had so many calls. Carl was getting annoyed. There were so many calls. And, uh, we've had suggestions from, uh, Ned saying talk about Jimmy Savile. Uh, John in North London. Um, I've just got John in North London. What does he want us to talk about? Oh, I've forgotten. Becca from Liverpool <laughs> wants to talk about Tracy Emin and Damien Hurst. Art. Um, Paul Andrews. Your mum called. Stop calling her. Turn her to listen to XFM. Yes, you, Paul Andrews, is about 38, at home with your wife and kids. Your mum just called in. Um, uh, I think uh, someone wanted amazing monkey facts. I can't even do this right, can I? Uh, to be honest with you, last week we were slagging off Carl as being the weak link in this show. <laughs> I think it's clear <laughs> what the weak link is. Um, oh God, who's the bloke who wants to- Hayley to go with him to X-Men? See, I shouldn't make notes. What's <laughs> wrong with you? <laughs> if you didn't spend so much time squeezing his head- and eating pies, <laughs> we might get uh, something done. Right, okay then, what should we talk about then? Um, right, Tracy, play a record and we'll discuss this. Tracy Edmund, Brilliant. make your okay. bed. Make your bed. <laughs> Damien Ernst, stop cutting up sharks and things. Um, Picasso, alright? Right, Rockbusters, what have you got for us, Carl? <laughs> Right. Um, there we go then. Three clues. Dig three cryptic it. clues. Couple of initials. Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Win some stuff. Do you want to go the through the stuff? Yeah. You get them. You're I'll definitely read. improving yourself as weeks go on. We've got, um, a, a, C a three CD set of the best of Inspiral Carpets. How they've strangled over three CDs, I've no idea. Yeah, I know. Extraordinary. Um, a number of other CDs, all of which are okay, plus, um, a t-shirt and a copy of Marion and Jeff Series 1 on DVD. Not bad at all, in an XFM bag. Well, he's noticed X-Men 2 isn't there, cos it's not out yet, but it is at the cinema, so I think Hayley should go with, what's his name? Well, Shut up! Okay. Right, go on, Carl. Right, the clues are, clue one. Um, that, uh <laughs> Ooh, they're having problems, they haven't Oh, this is- <laughs> Right, brilliant, Rockbusters, this is <laughs> like, this is what we did for. I know, i tell you what, I, I think Foxy was really soft on us. I think he's- oh, go on. This is what we're tuning for, okay, so this- Go on. one again. So uh, go on. <laughs> this is brilliant, come on. <laughs> this is like, who wants your millionaire? It's uh, Carl. Go on, Carl, uh, don't worry about him. He doesn't- he doesn't understand radio, Carl. He, um, he, 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 I heard his show before we had us, he was doing it, it sounded just like Dr. Fox. Yeah. Right, Go on. Uh, clue one, uh, they're, they're having problems, the, uh, <laughs> they haven't, they haven't got any rice. <laughs> <laughs> say it again, and say it like it's written down. Right. Say it like it's like you're reading it as opposed to making it up as you go along. I know you are, but say it again, cos all the ums and ahs, people who think are integral. They're, they're having problems. Th they're, uh, do it again. They're having problems, they haven't got any rice left. <laughs> Clue every word. <laughs> that's, that's the matter. Clue. I and love what's that. the what's the initial? CC. CC right. and the clue again. They're having a few problems with <laughs> that because they haven't got any rice left. Different <laughs> every time. <laughs> ah, got right. that number one. Uh, second one. The Geordie fella doesn't know what he's been charged for. <laughs> uh, ah. Okay. And what's right. the initials there? B W. Oh. The Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for. Right. And the final one, um, if he had two bricks <laughs> and he had to throw them at two women, right? <laughs> it's not! Right! You've got to go through this without going, right? Oh, not yet. just do it again. Just say it again. Think what you're going to say, then say it. I had two bricks. Oh, it, no, it was if I had before. Well, I've got to <laughs> Cause I'm gonna burst. Right, Carl, work out what you're gonna say and say it. Right. Okay, just calm down. Okay, Can we calm just let everyone calm down? Okay, right. I had two bricks to throw at two women yeah. and I didn't hit either of them. Right. Okay. The initials MM. Right, okay. so quickly again. Uh, they haven't got I've right. got that! I've got that and it's brilliant! That is a brilliant one! Okay. Right. <sighs> 
they've, they've run out of rice, they've got problems on their hands. CC, right? <laughs> the second one, Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for, right? BW. <laughs> and they had two bricks to throw at two women. Didn't it? Hit any of them, right? That's, <laughs> that's MM. Email in uh, Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM. Brilliant. Play record. Win some stuff. It's right. uh, email only <laughs> Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM. Dot Co. UK. Oh. Oh. White Stripes, Seven Nation Army on XFM one four point nine. Carl. Right? Um, are you thinking of starting a family? Only if, like, an accident happens or something. Yeah. Do you, were you there, Rick, when, uh, we were chatting about this the other day? Oh, yeah, no, I was, what did you say, Well, Carl? we were talking about his career and that, because he's on, um, MTV and I was going, oh, you gotta do this now. He was going, look, if it happens, it happens. I said, I've said to Zan, if it happens, it happens. She goes, well, what are your plans? It happens. The same with a baby. She said, are we gonna have kids or not? I go, look, if it happens, it happens. I go, well, how would it happen? He goes, if a condom splits. Amazing. I love the idea that that's the way you plan for a child. Imagine telling them that. When- where- where was I conceived? Can't remember. The condom split. Yeah. You were an accident. I love that. The well, romantic I, nature of that well, is I just I was told I was an accident, but, you know, it doesn't well, matter, does it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but it well, doesn't well, matter. Do many people sit down and say, right, do you think we should? Yes. Well, I stay lay down. <laughs> yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play. You can't sit down. You haven't got time for that discussion. No, it doesn't mean the conception. I think it means bringing up a child till it's eighteen. But the thing is, as well, it's one of them, innit? It's like if you think about having one, you go, well, the, ne the, the sort of negatives, you know, outweigh the positives. Yeah. I think, right? Go on. But if you have one, you go, oh, it's not that bad, is it? <laughs> so what are the positives and what are the negatives? Uh, like I say, the negatives. Outweigh it. I can't think of that many positives. They, they get in the way, don't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, cost you a lot. Cost a lot of money. Same with marriage. Like Suzanne saying, oh, we'll get married, so what for? Well, marriage doesn't cost anything. Well, it does. Well, no, and if you go to the registry office and then yeah, buy then, a house. But then what's the point? Well, tax breaks, you know, presents. I don't <laughs> think you get them anymore. Do you? I looked into that. <laughs> 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 you old romantic. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather have a ring or a three percent saving? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't see the point anyway. I got down on one knee and presented with some inland revenue forms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to show the benefits. That, that is great. I mean, if you are planning it, I think you've got to involve me and Steve in the radio station because it'll be. I mean, you take quite a lot on, don't you? Mm. So if you've got a kid at home and you're not and you're not sleeping, you haven't slept since you were twelve. You've got this. You've got MTV. You've got a kid. You know it might be one step too far because I wouldn't want I I wouldn't I wouldn't want to push you over the edge. <laughs> well, no, see, uh, go on. Sorry. No, I just was going to say I was talking to Suzanne last night about it and saying, mm. uh, <laughs> you know, uh, about earning money and that. And she said, well, you're already sort of earn a little bit more than me. Mm. So you know, if you get loads of money, she said I'd be happy staying at home. And doing nothing, maybe looking after a kid. I said, "Oh, so that's not happening." <laughs> <laughs> right. I said, "I could have a load of money now tucked away. I could have won, won some money, and I wouldn't tell you. I still want sort of that check offer every month because I get a check offer to sort of pay the bills." Yeah. And I think you need to keep that in a relationship. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Work as a team. Yeah. Yeah, that's not working as a team. Of course it is. Well, no, you share everything. Sharing everything is working as a team. Yeah. Whether Look, you earn most or some thir thirty-five grand back. It's not like you think that, oh no, I've, uh, I won the pools but I give her arms, she gets lazy, she just <laughs> sit around the house doing nout. So oh. she's still got to go to work in a job she hates. Yeah. I'll tell you though, she, she thinks that it'd be the worst thing that could happen if we got a load of money. Cause she'd want to go to Egypt, I tell I'm not going. <laughs> why would she want to go to Egypt? I don't, that's what I said. No, why would she- <laughs> why does she want to go to Egypt she wins a lot of money? She said it's- it's meant to be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so- so the incredible wonders of the pyramids, uh, and the Sphinx and so on. That's not of any interest to you. I've seen it though on the telly and that. I don't. Th I don't. Yeah. I don't want to go all that way just to see it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's. To yeah. experience other cultures, other lifestyles, travel broadens the mind. Mm, well, you don't. No, not really. You've seen enough different ones here, haven't you? Yeah. There's there's, there's parts of uh, Wyvern. Oh, you haven't seen yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, so so the, you're you're you don't want to make enough money. You don't want to make a lot of money because you're worried that Suzanne might want to go to Egypt. And then that'll be- No. And that's going to tell you I don't want to tell her that I'm making a lot of money. 
I can still tuck it away. Right. And what and will you do with it? When, when but it, when are you, you going to bend when it? When you turn up? up in a big, um, converted limo, it goes da 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 come on, we're going to a bingo. Where'd you get the car from? Never thee mind. Right? What, won't she be suspicious? Mm. When you've got a pet chimp. You know what, what I mean? What are you, I mean, yeah, what would you spend it on? Is there nothing that you want for? No, I've never... No, there's, there's now at the moment, honestly, it's, it's, uh, I'm quite happy. Do you know what I mean? I don't ask for much. Don't but you're not happy, you're always whinging always and moaning. Always whinging, always whinging. <laughs> Clearly there's something wrong. What, if someone gave you, what, okay, right, let's, let's be serious, we're not talking about billions, right? But if someone gave you, uh, a cash injection, just a one-off cash payment of two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, okay, what would you do with it? I mean, that's too easy, because that should obviously be a house. That should be the best house you can find uh, in London. I'd probably want to go and see a tornado. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's on your list. Okay. Uh, so it's so- it, You it's know- so, In many I ways he's so sweet, but you- th I wanna shake him. Can I just point out to you, Carl, I don't know if you know this, but if you get caught in a tornado, you do not whisk off into the la magical land of Oz. And land somewhere nice. Yeah, and crush a witch. St still in your rocking chair. Yeah, it doesn't happen, it's quite dangerous. But you go into a tornado, number one, fair yeah. enough. Number two? What, what, what brochure is that in? <laughs> that one? It's Texas, isn't it? Okay. Oh. Number two? Uh. Texas. So he's got tornado what number one. What is that in? Number it's two. Texas, isn't it? It's Kansas, I think, mainly. Well, can I just, I noticed someone's emailed here a link for, can you believe you luck, Carl? Monkeys for sale. Now, I don't endorse this in any way, but here you are, here's a monkey for sale here. Oh, that's terrible. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, it says, male, very smart little guy, yeah. loves to play and gives kisses, yeah. wears diapers and clothes, yeah. has been around lots of people and loves them, healthy and loves to eat. Dear, Sounds though, like Ricky. <laughs> How much is that? Well, it wasn't Carl, but it says it loves to be around people. Yeah. There's a gibbon there. A gibbon for- Too pricey though. Them. It's like that, uh, Donald McIntyre program he did, that Cheapest Chimps program. He didn't do Cheapest Chimps. Well, he didn't do a mm, program called Cheapest Chimps. He's saying that, but- Well, he didn't. Mm. There's that no point, did Donald McIntyre do a program called- Ch Play a record a minute. Play a record. Oh. Cracking tune. Now, if you're down in Texas, chasing your tornado, this would be on your stereo, surely. Surely, if you're in Alabama, it'd be in. He, well, he doesn't, he doesn't go to Alabama, it's Texas, that's where the tornadoes are. Do you not listen to what he says? It's Kansas. It's Kansas. Linda Skinner, of course, Sweet Home Alabama. Always worth a play, I think maybe once a month. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Carl, um, we're talking about having kids and stuff. I've always been quite thankful that Ricky's never wanted to have kids because, um, I just think he would set the worst example for a child that he <laughs> possibly could do. Um, just in conversation the other day, just happened to mention that he's taken to eating in the bath. Yeah, well, let me explain some. Let me explain some. Right. Um, I've got busy schedules. Yeah. <laughs> I get up, I, I meet Steve at a certain time, then I go, oh, I've got to go at 3 30 today, Steve. I'm working out. At four, I work out at four till five. I have to have something to eat before I go out, and often meet Johnny for a beer at six or some or go somewhere. So I thought, oh God, um, if I go around and have a bath straight after, then I have something to eat. I go, well, I got. A, sometimes there's chicken legs, right, and they're greasy. So one day I thought, hold on, I'll go to the bath with the chicken legs. I'll eat them in the bath, and it's brilliant. So I'm sitting in the bath. I eat the chicken egg. It's really greasy, right? I just throw it in the bin, go under the water, come up, I'm clean. <laughs> I've eaten, I'm clean, I get dressed, I go out and meet Johnny. I've lined my stomach, and the good thing about that is that when I come home, I few beers, and uh, I've eaten the chicken, I go, there's the only bread left, I just wipe it round the bath, I've got a lovely bread and dripping sandwich, that's not true, that bit. But I do, I do, I do eat in the bath. I mean, I, I, the second week of doing it, I was just eating in the bath, I was eating, I think I was in chicken eggs again, I'm eating in the bath. Jane walked past, just looked in at me, and she went, Christ, Caligula. Well, just to meet a fat Roman emperor eating. <laughs> Caligula, to be honest, is just too cool and impressive. <laughs> Not Caligula, old man Steptoe. <laughs> Have you seen the one where he's in the bath eating the pickled onions? No. He sat but... in the bath, he literally sat in the bath <laughs> eating some pickled onions. Some of them slip under the water, he fishes them out, put them back in the jar. I'd never do that. No, you will, you'd eat them. 
<laughs> you would never know. You, you, they wouldn't let food no. go by like that. But it's, uh, but it's the fat, it's chicken, it's big greasy slabs of chicken. Yeah. You're throwing the bones on the floor. No, I'm <laughs> putting for, them for in the wolves to scavenge. <laughs> I'm putting them in the bit. Stop biting your nails, Carl. Not only can you hear it, it's really rude. I don't know, I, what? Yeah, you're criticising him? Yeah. Criticising him for biting his nails? Yeah, you don't know where they've been. You eat chicken in the bath and then <laughs> go under the water and come up clean whilst sat in some water swimming with grease. <laughs> And fat. <laughs> and chicken bones. Yeah, <laughs> and breadcrumbs. Well, I like to bath. I like to bath like I, I, two I, or three times a day. Know, but do you not see why that's not cool and impressive? It's not like we're all gonna go, why haven't we all thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest though, Steve, that is the only time I eat oranges. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that is, that, that's, I, I've always thought that, an orange, I go, oh god, this is too annoying, and I don't bother. I don't bother eating oranges. Unless I they're tangerines, you can peel them in one and put them in one. I do not, I don't have big jaffas, there's just not, it's not worth it. What is wrong with you? you wh firstly, have you ever thought about cutting an orange into four quarters with a knife? Waste. What do you mean, a waste? More washing up. <laughs> Yeah, right, so, so this is what you got. this is why you can sleep at night. Cause you think, I've gotta run a bath and have an orange. I haven't got time. I'd love an orange now, I need the vitamin C, but I've gotta run a bath for it, at least have a shower. I'm not gonna be in there with another man. Oh, oh it's dear. Like, you, the two of you are just, you, you are like children. You're infants. Your mentality <laughs> is ludicrous. And you're embarrassing us in front of our special guests. Oh yeah. I uh, can't believe it. Now of course last week we've had, tattoo, yeah. we've had a number of letters, Rick, I'm just reading them now, saying okay. last week loved your interview with Chris Martin from Coldplay, yeah. genius. Another one here. Great insight into the man who wrote Yellow and <laughs> Clocks. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, yeah. Steve Merchant's interview with uh, Chris Martin was amazing. He showed his own TV show. Yeah. Just some of the letters we've received, really. Yeah. So yeah. this week, we're very lucky to have with us uh, Russian pop act Tattoo. Round of applause Hi. for them. Hello. Lovely to have them here. Uh, Tattoo. Now then, of course, there's been much contrary. Be much controversy that your kind of lesbian shtick is mm. just something to try and whip up some um, press attention. Uh, yeah, yeah. We are, <laughs> we are new, we are proper lesbians. We uh, we love Fanny more than cock. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And uh, tattoo, lovely to have you. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, now then, uh, you've got uh, you've got some live gigs. I understand. Plan. Yeah. Duh. Okay. I can't help but notice that you sound, dare I say it, Tata, you don't sound so much Russian as German. No, we, we cannot do the accent properly. From... Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Tata, it's a joy to have you. Thanks for coming down. Um, yeah. no, and duh. finally, no, you. uh, your lesbians, could, would, for instance, either myself or Carl we, be able to convert you yeah, from yeah, the lesbian yeah, yeah. ways? We, we like the muff so much that the knob is no good for us. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks very much, Tattoo. Yeah, thanks, Tattoo. Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah. Um, extraordinary. Ne so next week, share. Brilliant. So, if you've got any guests, <laughs> special guests you love us to interview, uh, then let us know. Wiki. Dot. Javes. Dot. Co. Dot. Uk. And we'll try and get there. Oh dear, play with Carl. Rockbusters answers next. I was going to say. Well, do you want to do that? No, let's do it next. Oh, after right. the after well, the record. Just say something. <laughs> what were you going to say <laughs> about gays and that? What? A bit. What were you going to say? Oh, we'll look forward to that. <laughs>
they downed the, you know, the fellas were, had like their undies on, and the, and the girls just had their knickers on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, uh, Sounds pretty erotic at the moment. Go on. And at the same time, they all whipped the pants off. Yes. Right? Yeah. Now, it was Spuck's Fizz, wasn't it? The, the, <laughs> yeah. the adult show. Now I said to Steve, at that point... Sorry, I wasn't there. He said it to me later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. said, well, well you, have a, you have a quick glance at the fellas. And then the annoying thing was, you sort of, I thought, right, now I'll have a look at the women, and it was too late, they put the knickers on. <laughs> How long were you looking at the fellas? Not that long, but... But why were like, you looking at them first? Uh, it's human nature, isn't it? Why? I don't know, but I'm sure you would have done the same thing. You just you just sort of think, well, how, how, how are they shaping up? <laughs> <laughs> so I it's, a, it's a comparative test. So what was the what was the who had the biggest knob? Who had the, which one of the blokes had the biggest knob? No, the, the, it's like you know, normal. <laughs> but I, I, that's, this that's is a, this is a whole new side of you. This is a whole other area. So you look at ball ballet dancers, you look at the gentlemen's No, I don't. Package. I just was- when he said this, it yeah. reminded me of this night when I was walking home thinking, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> didn't- didn't get a look. Cause I was messing Where was with... this? What- what <laughs> event was this where people are stripping off? Carl, I tell you what, you are the most interesting man I have ever met. But are you comfortable being nude and that? We've done this. Well, I don't know what this is. We did this last week about are you comfortable being nude? No, I, think I know. I was talking you're about probably that. most comfortable being nude. It's just probably not in public. Mm. Well, Ricky's only really comfortable nude when he's eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing to get, you know. Yeah, you can just wipe yourself down. Yeah, you just sit in the bath. Yeah. No, but I've talked about that. And then when I went, when I went home, I was talking to Suzanne about it, and she said, "What's all that about? You not you don't like being nude?" Right? <laughs> and I said, well, it's, "It's not." It's like I'm part of an Alan Bennett play. It's just, I love the way you talk. Remember once, right, St I don't know if I should talk about this, really, but- Well, that means you should, so go on. Go on. Uh, oh yeah. Right, we went to, um, went to Tenerife, right, one year. Oh, and I was still living in Manchester. I'm scared now. Yeah, I don't know what I'm, I'm actually no, scared. No, I'm, I'm thinking about Suzanne, but she's, she's well, working. Well, I, I don't want to know anything about Suzanne, come to on. be honest. No, but come on. It's, it go involves on. me more. Go on. Story. Go but on. I'm just explaining to you that I don't like being nude. Mm. Yes. Go on. So you're in Tenerife? In Tenerife, right. Didn't have much money. Stayed in this apartment that wasn't, wasn't that nice, right. Had cockroaches in it and stuff, right. Yeah. Uh, didn't have much money to go out at night. Uh, so we're in this sort of death trap of a- of an apartment, right? Uh -huh. Anyway, so when I was younger, right, had a bit more energy, so- <laughs> so like he's 30. 80, I know. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. start having it away a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joy! Beautiful. It's so, gone, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been here to work, I love it, go on. Right, so, you know, doing what I do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Someone starts banging on the door. So Susan Everyone's says, at it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you mean knocking on the door, right, okay. yeah. Knocking on the door, right. So Suzanne said, you better get it. So I said, well, I can't get it now, can I? I'll have to wait a bit. Right. I can't, I can't go to the door. Go on. So the banging's getting louder. Yeah. Someone at the door. Yeah. And she's like, oh no, but it must be important. I'm like, in a minute. Just, so anyway. <laughs> in a minute. I, I don't want to know anymore. Stick... <laughs> Keep going. No, no, come on, finish the story. Open the door. It's a fireman. So I just stick my head round, and he's going, you'll have to get out. The, the building's on fire, right? So I'm like, in a minute. Sorry, you weren't still having sex at this point? No, no, but, you know, right. still sort of got to wait a minute or I can't get my pants on. <laughs> oh, Carl, I wish I'd- I'm so sorry. Right, go on. So the, 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 now, now so the, what, the place is burning down. So it could be a serious big fire going on. Yeah. I'm sort of waiting. You can hear people sort of screaming and that, panicking. Yeah. Is that because the door's open and you're nude? Fire, the fireman's saying, will you get out, will you get out? I'm saying, in a minute. Right. And Suzanne was saying, you know, think of something that's not sexy. Sure. So I was thinking of people, you know, thinking maybe down in a fire might sort of calm you down. Yeah. <laughs> then the fireman said, we need a big pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure, go on. go on. But what I'm saying is, that, to me, I, I wouldn't have... Wanted to go out and be safe. Over, do you know what I mean? Over being naked. I don't like walking about. We're now on. 
So what I'm saying is, even <laughs> if that fire, I love the idea of everyone huddled in there with all the firemen. <laughs> it just the cameras fans long and it's Carl. Yeah, a just typical news report. Naked, with still. But would you, would, you, would you have gone out? We're now on. But why do I have to go out with now on? I just grab a pair of jeans. All right, but you just you know. What? There's a fire, Carl. Yeah, well, See, no, not you... everyone looks at men's packets. That's only you, remember. Most of the other firemen wouldn't be going, oh, look at him. But he's what interesting is, he's how pleased long... to see us. Carl, how long did it take? And did the thought of dying in a fire help? After a bit, but the fireman sort of had a go at me. Sure. What do you mean? Well, like, he wasn't happy that I was dawdling. Well, to be fair. But what can you do? Answers on a postcard. <laughs> <laughs> to the usual address. XFM, care of Let Leicester Square. Well, let's just get these right. Let's, no, let's play record, let's have Rockbusters and oh, Monkey News. We don't uh, have time for Monkey News. We'll squeeze them in. Wow. <laughs> it's a god awful small affair. Life on Mars by David Bowie on XFM. Right, come on, we're running out of time. Blockbusters, the results in. Sorry, oh, what a giveaway. <laughs> oh no, embarrassing. I've given it away. <laughs> Straight into monkey news. Go on so, then. Uh, yeah, Blockbusters, what were the clues? Uh, the clues were uh, the first one was uh, they're, they're running out of rice, so they've got problems. That was CC, that was China Crisis. Right? Okay, yeah, if they ran out of rice in China it would be a crisis, fair enough. Second one, the, uh, the Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for, right? That was Bill Wyman. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And the, uh, the third one, I had two bricks to throw at two women and I didn't <laughs> hit either of them, that was Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. <laughs> I let him up, those were alright though. That's extraordinary. The winner? Uh, Gina. I think Gina Ferry. Well done, Gina. And, uh, the reason I gave it to Gina is because she's included, and this is a wonderful segue, some monkey fact, uh, information of her, of her own. She says, apparently, that the group Chumbawamba got their name from one of those monkeys in a room with a typewriter experiments. Someone did it as a joke, and Chumbawamba was a word that was typed out, and that's the group, that's where the group got their name. And apparently. their lyrics. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Which so, is, um, which is good. So let's have official monkey news. Play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. All right, we've got to be quick. Go but, on, uh, this is something that was sent in to me ages ago, and I don't know why I haven't done it yet, because it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, we were talking about monkeys typing, mm -hmm. um, the Shakespeare theory and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, this is about a uh, little monkey called Marty, right? Basically, uh, it's in some science lab, right? It's in there. Uh, it was wandering about out of its cage, right? The lab fella was busy on the phone or something. Yeah. Right? And, um... Mm. Typical. It's wandering about, it goes up to a, a PC, that's in the corner, a little computer, types down, my name is Marty. Right? Mm. So, the fella got off the phone, saw this on the screen with the monkey sat there, says to his mate, have you done this? Right, hold on, Carl. Right. Let him finish. Oh. Before you question, always let him finish. Right. I don't know what to do. Time's against us, come I on. He said, uh, he said, have you done this? He says, done what? He said this on, on the screen here, saying, my name's Marty. Right? He goes, what are you talking about? As he's having an argument with his mate, saying, you're lying, you did it. Monkey's sat there, typing, this isn't a practical joke, my name is Marty. Right, and that's the end of the story? Uh, um, I'm not coming in next week. Uh... I think, we, I, think I, I think we need a week off. I actually think we need a week off. It's doing a, uh, a web chat or something. Uh, you can go online and have a chat, chat with it. The monkey's doing a web chat? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Has right, he got his own website yet? His uh, favourite Buffy the Vampire stuff here? Have a look at that, have a look at that. Right. Do you believe that, Carl? It's all there. No, but do you believe it? Do you believe that monkey could type that and then say this is not a practical joke when he's all arguing? Weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What do you reckon, Steve? Yeah, well, it's obviously a, a wind-up. It's a joke. It's not even- you haven't even got some of the facts wrong. It's just a wind-up. Have you noticed the date? Is it April the 1st? It is April the 1st. You are joking. That it was sent. You're an idiot, Carl. It was sent on April the 1st, Carl. So you're saying the monkey knows it's April the 1st, but you and don't believe- And it's doing a wind-up, yes. 
Yeah, I think the, I think the monkey is, has thought, I'll do it on April the 1st so that people think that it's a wind-up, but in actual fact I am a monkey that can type and read. It's a shame you never went into investigative journalism. You could have brought down, you know, oh, the Watergate Carl. scandal. Poor Carl. Well, I was thinking of a song that sums us three up, yeah? What are we? What are we? What do you think- how would you sum us up? Um, tricky. Well, young, gifted and black. True enough. Apart from- apart from a couple of them. Yeah, well, we're not gifted. No. And we're not very young. No, I'm certainly not. Should we take a week off? Yeah. Should we maybe just knock it on the head altogether? We'll take a week off and see what happens. Okay. See you next- no, not- let's not see you next see week. See you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Cheers then, Carl.